Well, my name's Steve Feltham, and I've been resident on the side of Loch Ness since 1991. Full time, summer and winter, watching and waiting for a sighting of the Loch Ness monster. And I live in this van, which is a converted mobile library van. I used to move all around the loch to different vantage points, so that then you'd get to hear if somebody's seen something down the other end, I'd be on the spot. Now I'm permanently resident at the door's end of the loch, looking straight away down the whole length of Loch Ness. And trying to solve this mystery, really. That's my occupation. I've seen, the best thing I've seen in the time that I've been here was at Fort Augustus, probably, probably about 13 years ago now. And it was 11 o'clock in the morning. The waves were all going across my vision like that. And the waves were about a foot and a half high with white crests on them. And this thing, all you could see was like a white streak, like a torpedo going through, battering its way against those waves. So as it hit each wave, there'd be a splash of water off of that, only for 10 seconds, shooting through the water. And I know there's nothing in Loch Ness in the way of resident fish that would cause such a big disturbance as that, to be visible at about a quarter of a mile distance. There had to be something very substantial pushing against the waves. And that's the best thing I've seen on the surface. I've been out on a lot of boats using sonar, and with that we get contacts with things, but all you get is a big blob or a little blob. The little blobs are fish, the big blobs, they're the mystery. Obviously, because it's still a mystery, the jury's utterly out as to what the final answer is. People, different people that get involved in this subject have different guesses. Each guess, I suppose, is as valid as the next until we find out what they are. People look for sturgeon in here, they look for big eels, big catfish. Well, there's a catfish called the Wells catfish. That can grow to five metres long and live for a hundred years. Eats other fish. If you had a, a dozen of those released into here a hundred years ago, that could be the backbone of your evidence, what people see when those animals are chasing the resident fish which are just below the surface. You know, there's others that, that have slightly more extreme beliefs that we're looking for plesiosaurs left over from the Jurassic period. Some I've met are looking for beings from other planets that are living on the bottom of the loch. You know, lots of people look, look for different things at Loch Ness. Um, if the loch's flat calm, I'll be out there watching the water from dawn till dusk. If it's choppy at all, then you're not really going to see much beyond half a mile's different distance. There's not much to be seen then. So it goes in waves as to how much watching you can actually do. But because I'm here all the time, that means I'm a place where people all around the loch know I'm here. So the reports filter through to me here. And if nowadays a lot of these people that see things here, they've generally got a video camera or a digital camera or something. And so I get to look at this new bit of evidence. And if it's just seven humps following a boat, I can disappoint them, but save it from going into the public domain. Or if it's something mysterious that beats me as to what it could be, then I sort of push that in the direction of the journalists, and it goes from there. So it's important that there's somebody here that isn't taking the mick out of them, that means that the public can report what they've seen, really. Certainly when I first arrived, I was hearing of maybe, maybe two dozen reports by people over the course of a year, of which three quarters of those are boat wakes and the wind on the water and swimming animals like otters or deer or whatever it might be, seals occasionally. In the early days, probably half a dozen good sightings a year. Now we're down to one or two good, good sightings. This year there's only been one, one photograph taken of something unexplained. And I think the explanation for that is probably that we've been looking for 20 or 30 mysterious animals in here but they don't live forever and so this population is dwindling and certainly there's a team that come from America that do a lot of work here their work is on the bottom now looking for carcasses and I'm inclined to agree that that's possibly where the answers lie on the bottom now I think with what I do I'm, I'm here for the duration really I'm in the place I love doing the thing I love and long may that last you know I'm not about to rush off and go and find the Yeti. I'm dedicated to looking for what's in Loch Ness and very happy with it.